Hello everyone and welcome to a new Popper video. Today we don't do gameplay, we are going to talk about the top 5 best Popper deck Road to Popper Get It, which is happening this weekend and I chose to join me Tommaso Loss. Welcome. Hi all, I'm Tommaso from FIFA. Alright, Tommaso correct me if I'm wrong, you won or rather, you made the finals of two of the last three Popper Geddon played. That is an incredible achievement. Yeah, yeah. For the one in Rome and the, the previous one from last year in FISA. Yeah, we, we actually played against a lot in the past Popper Geddon, unfortunately. I uh, haven't been able to join this uh, lately. I will not be in Pisa, be uh, busy testing. I'll actually have a flight tomorrow to Lisbon, but I'll be rooting for you. And uh, here we're going to be talking about Popper Post Modern Horizons 3. We already have a card in our ban list that is Cranial Ram, and there are going to be a lot of cards that we're going to talk about. First thing first, let's start with number six. Well, I said it was top five, but as always, every uh, top of the deck always got an honorable mention, which in this case is going to be Boggles, a deck that, uh, you know, kind of evergreen in Popper always gets some cards that make it better and this time it's malevolent rumble what does this card do to the deck yeah basically it does it all because it uh, provides a card selection being able to find uh, both uh, the enchantment and uh, a creature like either one of them and also, and also it lets you an uh, eldrazi that protects you protects your, protects your creatures, creatures from medis and, uh, and uh, in uh, like in desperate cases when you know that the opponent has an ember removal you can Enchanted directly with uh, the Eldrazi creature to like, be a bit uh, faster. Yeah, no, for creature. sure. This card definitely, definitely seems like a great addition to the deck. We're gonna see it again on uh, spot number four because uh, we selected Grul Ponza, and uh, this is another deck that uh, well, has a similar game plan to Boggles, which goal is to not really let you play magic. And uh, the goal here is, of course, to blow up your lands between. Thermocrest and Asin Vonvulimos, but here there are a ton of new cards. We have the aforementioned Malevolent Rumble, but we also have Eldrazi Reproposer and Brighting Chrysalis, which are very good new cards from MH3, top commons in the draft, so it makes sense they are good in Popper. Yeah, these are uh, really strong creatures that uh, like, uh, protect uh, from... Uh... Flyers because uh, the withering uh, chrysalis is as uh, rich, and even if it's uh, well hidden in its nest, and also the next two bodies that uh, protect your creatures from many things that were uh, like a pain for uh, bond or when, and, yeah, like you, you face a mana for a 6 5 and then you just go to the TV play and suck it. And, uh, and also, also they, they their ability to spawn and trigger uh, uh, cast, so they are uh, uh, less, uh, uh, lots less, less uh, ways to cast than generally. Yeah, yeah, these cards uh, definitely do a lot. They have reach, which is hidden among the very many sentences of Wrath and Chrysalis. And also, all this deck is very, um, I mean, it's not, it's not very, it's not, that doesn't suffer counterspell very much. You have Cascade mechanic and you have this when you cast a Drazi uh, type of mechanic. So, you know, uh, another deck that improves a lot with MH3 and a deck that also preys on some of the, uh, you know, control deck that you see around for something like Familiars, for example. What about just Gaia yeah. Ephemerate? What's the matchup there? Yeah, both uh, Bogos and Pons have very polarizing matchups. Uh, and uh, I would say that against this guy, it's uh, like favorable to Pons and also favorable to Bogos. So, yeah, in general, I think this guy is not well, really well positioned right now. Yeah, you, you came second in uh, in uh, Milan with just guy, right? Or in Rome, uh, sorry. I came uh, top four at the domination event. This is oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember you doing well in, <laughs> in one of the events. Yeah, I love uh, just guy ephemerate, but uh, not in this top. Uh, another car, another deck that um, is doing well and hasn't seen that much play lately, but I guess it, it really improved is Rakdos Madness. This deck, actually, the way it improved is weird, because it's not with a Rakdos card, but with a Demir card. Sneaky Snacker, blue-black, flying, whenever you draw your third card in a turn, you return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. And the way you're going to draw your th third card is just draw a step, and then you have plenty of ways to draw two cards, like Demandancer, Highway Robbery, Faithless Looting, 
Just cracking two clues. Yeah, this card seems uh, very good. Do you think that uh, it's here to stay? Yeah, I think that for, uh, from all the decks that can utilize it in Anchor, it's uh, uh, Rakdos Barn is the one with, where it uh, fits like uh, perfectly. Because uh, you, you always want to discard cards in Madness. And here, like, like, uh, it's, it's art, it's uh, art uh, as a pseudo Madness card. And, and also, also you, you are drawing, drawing a lot of cards and, and uh, sources of so you, 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 you get, get basically uh, a free body of the as and also, and also it's, it's almost unkillable. Yeah, Naked Knacker is featuring in a bunch of new, in a bunch of top decks. We will see it later in Grace's Affinity and also in Demir. Terror, which somehow it's not here in this top six decks. Th did that deck lo lost a lot with damage three? You think? Yeah, I think so because it uh, it is weak to trap and farm, which is the new white uh, you exile of the uh, target opponent graveyard uh, spell, and also it uh, it is weak to the, the fairy it is also with the and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not, not whether the position Yeah, let's let's go to uh, the 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 third deck, a deck that, uh, as you said, Italians love because it's one of the many mid-range decks in the format. And uh, you chose uh, Orzov over Boros. I'm a big fan of Boros. But ah, I, it, it pains me to not see it here. Uh, you chose Orzov because, well, Orzov got a new card. We will see it after with Affinity as well. But Refurbished Familiar is one of the strongest cards in Popper. It costs three and a black, but it has Affinity for Artifacts. It has Flying, and when it comes into play, each opponent discards a card. And if they can't, you draw a card. So this is just recurring card advantage. Uh, you do have your Glint Awk and Corsca Fisher to return it. Affinity plays, uh, for example, the... Um, what's the name? Blood the one Fountain. Blood Fountain, of course. And uh, you uh, just go over and over. You even put Okiba Gang Shinobi in this deck in order to uh, trigger it again. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a cool-looking deck. And you have the aforementioned Thrub and Charm, which is very good at killing 5-5s, five at Exiling Graveyard, and even the Scrolls Enchantment. What does not discard do? <laughs> it does it all, basically. I think uh, it could be even reasonable to play more copies of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because uh, this deck gained a lot because uh, both the Charm and Refurbish Familiar have helped this uh, greatly against, uh, like, like, maybe matchups that were uh, really bad before, because Familiar provides both aggression and uh, it discards kind of rapid movement. And also, also Trap and Charm gets you a way to both kill a creature and inside the graveyard. And basically, it's never the end. Yeah, one of the reasons why I preferred Boros over Orzov was the ability of Boros to just burn your opponent. So when you play against Gogari, um, Gogari Gardens, or you play against Altatron, which are bad matchups for both, you could just, you know, burn you for 14 damage. Uh, whereas uh, this deck was missing that angle and sometimes it was just difficult to kill your opponent especially if they gain life with the various ways that you gain life in Popper. But yeah, Refurbished Familiar and you see here Inspiring Overseer as well, Galinta, Corsica Fisher. It's strange to me to see Fanatical Offering over Deadly Dispute. Do you think it's better in this deck? Mm, I don't think so. It, I took a list uh, from a challenge. So okay, okay, okay. I, I would rather play Deadly Dispute. Okay, uh, one thing that scares me though is this 4 Ancient and 4 Vault of Whispers. If I'm playing Popper, Gorilla Shaman, I I'm afraid of Gorilla Shaman. So having a mana base like this makes me makes me very much scared. Yeah, I'm there is the Basilicas that uh, helps with that. But uh, yeah, you, you are definitely with Gorilla Shaman playing this deck. And this deck is the first one of this uh, top 5 to play Dust to Dust which is obviously going to be premium in uh, uh, Popper. And we have another deck that uh, has a lot of dust to dust right here. In the second place, we have Cogates. This is a deck that Gibber Nassif almost uh, won the, the Popper uh, um, content creator event last uh, Saturday. Uh, actually, came in the came second, uh, losing the final to Grace's Affinity, which you might have guessed is coming up later. But yeah, so... Colgate's just got no new cards, right? 
Uh, yeah, you could play Travencham. I think uh, if I were to play Colgate, I would play some copies of that. That's but uh, yeah, it's just solid. It has uh, all the tools you need to fight against uh, Grixis. And uh, yeah, it's uh, just yeah, uh, a solid, solid plan. And, uh, it is a matter of executing. Yeah, exactly. This is the deck where you need to time your brainstorm and shuffle effect properly and uh, gain value. And then you have those four Dust to Dust, Revoke Existence, Gorilla Shaman, Four Blue Mental Blast, Three Red Mental Blast. This deck is a great cyborg for Pauper and a great A plan. So, you know, very difficult deck to pilot and a very good deck to play, in, especially in a long tournament like, like Pauper Get. And I think it's definitely a deck that will... Uh, we will see a lot of that in the high tables, right? Yeah, fair enough. One thing to notice is that uh, with MH3, um, Garden of the Guild fact is a little uh, weaker than before because they printed uh, um, an answer to it in the form of Fungus the Games, but now Red Deck that previously weren't able to fight it, now they can uh, kill it. Like yeah. With, uh, and, and Karma is, is not bad, bad in every other match, match like uh, the one that was, was played before at the, the cost of three mana. Yeah, when I last the last video I played pre ma pre ma pre image three, I was playing the yeah the, you mentioned it the three mana the three mana instant ghost, fire, uh, think, ghost yeah. yeah ghost something and this is much better exiles as well so you can even exile uh, you know a cat or the very many uh, things that uh, the the recursion deck wanna wanna return also. I think another thing that changed with MH3 is that Edict effect got a little bit worse. I mean, you mentioned it, how all the spawn, yeah, yeah. so the Titan, recurring Titan Blade may not be as good as it used to be uh, before MH3. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's get to the final. Let's get to the first place here. We got Affinity. This is the list that Thierry Ramboa won the uh, showcase event on, sorry, not showcase, the streamer event on uh, uh, Saturday and... Uh, here, we don't actually have Sneaky Snacker, which was a card that I played uh, when I played this archetype. What do you think about the absence of Sneaky Snacker in, in this list? Yeah, I kind of agree of not playing it. Like, it depends, because uh, playing Sneaky Snacker is stronger into the middle, but uh, it's a bit weaker when you get... Uh, even when you get hate at the post side, because you end up with this fairy in hand that... Uh, that's literally the only thing to help you when yeah. the opponents yeah. dust to dust your land or go even shaman them. Because yeah. it, it really depends. It's, it's still a strong card because you're drawing so much with affinity, you can bring it back uh, basically every yeah. turn, yeah. like uh, yeah. Rapture's one before. Uh, it's, it's a matter of taste, I think. I feel like uh, this list is more. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, have, you definitely have slots to cut. You have Frog Might. So yeah. yeah. Is very powerful. In my list, I also had a cast down and counter spell. This deck doesn't play any of them. Very round with eight card draw effect, two max immunization, and even Karkan Shaman, which I guess you need. If you put in the top six Boggles and Ponza, then you need Glockland Shaman in the main. Yeah, I think so. Also, I think it's reasonable to play some cast downs because. Uh, the new Eldradi, Eldradi from Ponza literally wrecks this deck so being a 4-5 reach and blocks, and blocks every creature with it. That's true. Wow. It doesn't even die to God Blast. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, the that, fourth that, point. Yeah, that, yeah I think it's, <laughs> that card seems very good against Affinity. Yeah, Affinity is a really strong deck because Familiar is a, a busted card, but uh, if you notice, uh, basically every other deck uh, in this top... Uh, Six as uh, uh, well, well, either a good match against, against Affinity or it's uh, like even. even. So, so it, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a strong choice for Popper Get, but, but you will get uh, eight a lot playing it by Dust to Dust, Gorilla Shaman, and really by Dust to Dust. So, yeah, it's not like a tier zero or anything, just a song. Yeah, ever since the bridges came to Popper Affinity, especially Grixis has been around. I was never a fan of the deck. I always felt like I would rather be on the Gorilla Shaman Dust to the side of the matchup. And now though, the Refurbished Familiar is very, very powerful. Uh, it's a way to just beat every hate because you can easily go like turn one something, turn two, just, you know, Refurbished Familiar or like on by turn three, you can cast two Refurbished Familiar already and your opponent will be down cards. And even if they dust to dust, you already have like 
two two ones, and of course you play twenty lands, so you can keep on playing lands, and and that's to us is like very bad late, well, not very bad late game, but it's you know it's not by destroying two lands on turn four that you're gonna win or on turn five. So it is a powerful deck. It will be the most popular deck. So make what you want to do with that information, but uh, definitely come prepared. And I would say that's why you don't put blue black terror because it doesn't have any hate for affinity. Yeah, blue black terror probably is really bad name for affinity. Also, because now the two one flyer that makes you discard a card and can't be killed with enough out, basically just a kill you. Yeah. Oh, all right. With this, we're gonna wrap up this uh, top five best decks in popper. I you arrived to here. Consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you, Tommaso for the uh, help. I wish you the best of luck at Poppergeddon. Thanks. Bye, all.